Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and I'm very excited to start this new series of videos called Spotlight on Plugins. Hopefully I can do these a little bit more regularly and uh, maybe release one a week showing you uh, a new plugin um, uh, and how to use it and all that stuff. So uh, kind of excited for that. And I'm really excited that this uh, Copyist Helper plugin from Robert Patterson is the first one. Um, there's a new version as of yesterday uh, relative to the time I'm recording this um, for Copyist Helper and also the uh, rest of the Patterson plugins version 6.03. And with 6.03 and the Copyist Helper plugin, he added uh, two really, really key features that I was uh, fortunate to enough to beta test for him and, and uh, offer some advice on. So I'm really excited about this. There's, there's new insert delete measures, insert systems, delete systems functions in the Copyist Helper. Uh, that will do just that while retaining the measure numbering, which is really, really uh, amazing. Uh, particularly if you work with musical theater a lot, you'll know the, the problem of inserting measures with A and B bars. In fact, in one of the previous videos I did on this series in the Measure Number Matrix series, I spent 21 minutes um, uh, showing you how to deal with this measure number uh, region dialog box to get A and B bars and to get deleted bars and everything. It, it's, it's very complicated. It's, it's kind of confusing. And even doing this, uh, I'm just going to show you how this is done live. And again, I know how to do this really well. So this is going to take me, I don't know, 30 or 40 seconds. But let me just show you this. So insert two measures. We're going to call this 1 through 22, add a region. 23 through 24, starting number one, but we're going to go to the AB. Prefix 22, add a region. This is going to include uh, 25 to end, I believe. Uh, starting measure 23, go back to the 1, 2, and 3. Now I'm doing this really fast because I know what I'm doing, but uh, believe me, if I haven't done this in a while, it does take me a second to kind of figure out um, how to do this, and we click OK, and again we get 22, 22A, 22B, 23, 24. Now that took me 30, 40 seconds, and again, I had just been doing this several times before this, so I kind of knew ahead of time what I needed to do. Um, and also when you start adding more, it gets it starts getting even more complicated doing the math if you've got to do 37 A through C and then, you know, cut bars 45 through 49. It just gets really complicated to do this math with the included measure numbers and the starting measure numbers. Again, 21 minutes it took me to, you know, explain this portion of the measure number region dialog box. And I'm sure a lot of you know how much of a pain in the neck this is. Now there is a JW plugin. Um, called uh, JW Measure Numbers that makes this slightly easier, but it's still a little kludgy. It takes a little bit of figuring out to know how to do that. However, this new plugin or the new version of this copyist plugin includes these options called Insert Measures, Delete Measures, which I'm going to show you right now, and it makes this whole process instantaneous. Um, you uh, uh, select the plugin with a measure selected, and it will give you this box, and it will ask you how many measures, two measures, and by default it will answer insert two measures before the selection, and it will use capital letters. You can choose to insert after the selection, or you can choose to use lowercase letters, or both if you want. And so we're just going to choose two measures before 23, and bingo. 22, 22A, 22B, 23, 24. It is absolutely instantaneous, and this is just a, a marvel of a plug-in for us that uh, deal with these things all the time. And if we take a look at the measure number region, it did exactly what I showed you how to do in 21 minutes, or in the 30 or 40 seconds it took me to actually do it. Um, it does it automatically. And you can continue to do this wherever you need to. And again, there's just no more math involved. If I want lowercase letters, we could do that, 27 A, B, C, 28. Um, just, just really, really ingenious. Um, one of the other cool things is that it will do inserts within inserts. So if I enter two measures before 22 B here, let's see what happens. This time it doesn't matter with the upper or lowercase because it's going to um, nest the uh, the change here. So it's going to go 22A, 22A1, 22A2, 22B23. And this uh, is actually somewhat limitless. So I could do this again. 
maybe this time I'll use uh, lowercase letters. We'll enter three there. This is going to start getting um, crowded, but you can see what's going on. 22A, A1, A1A, A1B, A1C, A2, B, 23. So it's it's uh, just sort of an endless nest of inserts this way. And it's just super, super um, uh, instantaneous and helpful. The other piece of this is that you can also use this to delete measures. So um, if we choose these two measures, and you actually don't have to have uh, measures selected, right? You can just select, or uh, sorry, you don't have to have a stack selection like this. You can just select the two measures and it will still work. Copyist helper, delete measures. And what you'll see is that it will go for measure 21 through 24. And again, it's changing the measure number dialog box so that uh, we have two regions now. So again, just a really uh, useful in instantaneous way of getting uh, A and B bars or uh, cutting bars while retaining the measure numbers. Now, interestingly, one of the other problems that he managed to solve with this plugin, and uh, if you're familiar with this problem, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to my base part here, and we're going to see that I've made some manual adjustments to my measure numbers over here, 35, uh, 36, 38, 39. And um, if you're familiar this, with this, when you split the measure number region, look, let's say I'm just going to do something here. I'm going to call this measures 1 through... Uh, 20 and then add another one call this 21 through the end uh, starting with measure you know 34 or something so that I have a, a, a cut here that I'm doing manually with the measure number region dialog box you'll notice that those um, bar number position changes get reset so these numbers aren't orange now these are different numbers because of the way I did it but uh, the the numbers aren't orange in, anymore. In fact, if I undo, you'll see that they'll go back to their moved position. So this is what happens when you uh, split the measure number regions is that the positions um, get uh, blown out essentially because they're attached to the region themselves. So um, Robert actually managed to get this to work where it will retain those positionings. So now if I use my copyist helper insert measures here to put in uh, two measures before 27 normally this would uh, you know completely blow out the positions of these measure numbers but as you can see they are retained now this is huge because if you're dealing with a score with many linked parts uh, 10 12 15 linked parts and you have all of these measure number positions moved out of the way for various reasons, and then you do an insert. It's just a huge pain in the neck going through and, and resetting all these positions. But this plugin takes care of it. So again, it's just such a huge time saver. Um, so I, I'm, that's why I'm really excited about this plugin. And that's just the first piece of it. That's the uh, insert measures and delete measures portion of this. Totally worth its weight in gold. And I should have mentioned that um, in the description of the video here, I will put a link to the Patterson site where you can buy the uh, Patterson plugin suite, which is this menu here. And you get all of these other useful plugins that at some point uh, I may talk about. And also the Copyist Helper is its sort of own uh, separate plugin that you can buy separately or together with the Patterson suite. Um, I really encourage you to get this plugin because, you know, if you do musical theater, these two options alone are just absolutely worth their weight in gold. So let me talk about the other piece of the new part of this plugin. Again, this is all new with, with uh, version 6.03 of the Copyist Helper plugin. And that is the uh, insert systems and delete systems functions right here. And um, what this does is something similar to what Finale does with inserting systems. You may be familiar that you can do this from the page layout tool. You select a system and choose the uh, insert staff system, delete staff system. And this has some advantages that I'll talk about in a second. But we can do this with a Patterson plugin. We don't need to be in page layout. We can actually do this right from the selection tool and just select any measure within the system. doesn't matter. And then choose Copyist Helper. And we can insert systems. And what this will do is it will insert a system like Finale inserts a system, but it will also retain the measure numbering. So now measure 21 uh, will indeed remain as 21. Or if you choose to insert after the selected system, then the, the system will get uh, added here, and then 25 will remain as 25. And so what we can do is just insert one system with four measures before uh, this system. Um, we won't use lower cases and see what happens here. And you'll see that we'll get the inserted system with the inserted bar. So it's sort of combining the uh, the previous part of that uh, uh, plugin that I showed you uh, plus the insert systems.
There's another really nifty advantage to using this plugin versus using uh, Finale's version of do the, doing this. And I'm just going to show you what happens when you do this in the uh, page layout tool, insert staff systems, similar type of thing, insert one with four measures. And we get the same thing, obviously, without the measure numbers retaining. So this is now 25 instead of 21. Um, what Finale will do when you insert a system like this is it will actually retain the staff spacing uh, for the systems going forward. So, you know, whatever the staff spacing is on this system uh, is the same as it was when it was over here. This one was the same as it was when it was over here, etc. And also, if you have hidden staffs, it will also retain the, the, the correct uh, staffs that are hidden. What Finale will not do, which is entirely unfortunate, is that it will not retain the uh, baseline adjust adjustments to the system. So I'm just going to show you uh, over here. What you can see is that my uh, Lyric baseline does not get adjusted. I should have showed you the before, um, but uh, you can see that obviously this is a mistake. Actually, let me just undo this. And you'll see how it was originally, where this this word is now out of the way. That's because uh, I had moved the baseline for the lyric. So again, when you insert that system here, let me just do this one more time. Right, the baselines don't follow. The baseline adjustments are pinned to the particular um, system number. So you can see that that baseline adjustment is now on this staff with the wrong lyrics and everything. So this is this is always a problem when you do this uh, insert. Um, systems feature. So Patterson's plugin fixes this, which is really, really cool. So now I'm going to do the insert systems with a Patterson plugin the same way. Insert one with four measures. Again, you also get the A and B bars, which is really handy, but the baseline adjustments follow. They flow down the, the uh, system. So now this uh, word is out of the way. So this is incredibly um, uh, useful in my opinion. And the same thing happens when you use the delete system. So again, you don't have to select, you can just select a single uh, measure there. Copy as helper, delete systems. It will delete that whole system, retain the measure number. So we go from 20 to 25, and it will flow the baseline adjustments upwards. So now this uh, Broadway word here is out of the way of that low note. So really, really uh, cool stuff. Interestingly, if you do get the full uh, Patterson plugin set, so these options are only available in the Copyist Helper, Insert Measures, Delete, Insert Systems, Delete Systems, etc. Um, these four options will retain the measure numbers. If you get the full Patterson plugin suite, there's another mis uh, couple things in the miscellaneous section that looks exactly the same Insert Measures, Delete, Insert Systems, Delete Systems. These will do the same exact things without. Uh, retaining the measure numbers. Um, so if I choose it from here, insert systems, you won't get the lowercase letters because again, this is not retaining the measure numbers, but we can insert the staff system, um, have the measure numbers keep flowing uh, onward, and it will also retain the uh, baseline adjustments. So this is sort of a um, uh, an alternate version of doing that uh, without the measure number um, uh, measure numbers staying the same. So both options are there. Um, and like I said, the, the options in the copyist helper to insert the A and B bars and, and you know make sure the cuts have the same measure. I mean, this is just absolutely game changing for us in the, the musical theater industry. So I really highly recommend getting this plugin. Again, the link will be in the description. So uh, please, please, please go get that. Now, I also want to spend a little bit of time looking at the other part of the copyist helper plugin and uh, for that, we go to the Copyist Helper menu here, just the Copyist Helper plugin. And this brings up sort of the old version, or uh, it's not old, but the uh, the original version of the Copyist Helper. Version 6.03 is more or less the same as version 6.02 in this part of the Copyist Helper. But uh, there's some really interesting things here. There's a Measure Numbers tab and an Instrument Headers tab. And I'm just going to spend a little bit of time, particularly on the Measure Numbers, because there's some really useful things in this part of the plugin as well. Now I'm going to gloss over the top of this section just a little bit because um, what this will do is you can actually list measure numbers with commas in between them, uh, even with uh, A and B bars, although the, the capital letter has to be, um, or the case of the letter has to be correct in order for this to, to work. Um, but basically what you can do is just list numbers here and, fin and uh, the, the plugin will uh, enclose all of these numbers if you have like, you know, if you do a select all. Um, it does it in a very specific way. Uh, with the uh, measure number enclosures. It's a little bit um, uh, tricky to do. You have to actually 
you know, open the measure number regions, make sure that the enclosures are turned on. And then uh, if you're doing this in linked part, make sure they're turned on and then click OK and then go back and then turn them off. This will sort of prime the numbers uh, to be able to for the for the plugin to be able to use that feature. And basically what you do is you just do this and you press go and it will box these numbers. Again, I'm glossing over this. You can add some positional uh, offsets for it. Um, I'm glossing over it because Finale added the uh, the auto sequenced measure number uh, expressions, which sort of kind of does the same thing that this does. Um, this plugin predates the addition of that, so um, this is a little bit obsolete in that regard. But uh, there are occasions to use this, and particularly if you're working with an old file, this is actually helpful. And there's even a way to use expressions instead of the measure numbers. Um, so you can kind of explore this, but again, I think the auto sequence measure number sort of uh, supersedes the functionality here a little bit. But what I really want to talk about is the uh, second portion of this, which is the numbers without enclosure sections. And there's a bunch of stuff going on here, and let me just move over to my uh, violin part for a second. Uh, so we can take a look at this. There's a bunch of things going on here. There's the mid-system numbers, system start numbers, multi-measure rest numbers, and they all have these H and V values. Uh, these are uh, pretty much absolute values in that when you have these set um, and you have a selection made, it will move those measure numbers to these positions. Now you can check the mid-system numbers or uncheck it, which means that you can uh, decide not to move the mid-system numbers. You don't have that option with the system start numbers or the multi-measure rest numbers, so these numbers will always change to these values. So my advice here is to be careful about what you have in these values to begin with. These numbers will stay in this plugin forever. So however you have this set last, that's how this will be set when you open this plugin again. And my recommendation is to, and when you initially open this plugin, is to match these values to whatever values you're using in your measure number region dialog box, in this case for the linked parts. So you just check the uh, show on start of staff system position, make sure that, okay, so it's zero and negative five, uh, which is the second uh, one here, zero and negative five. Uh, the show on every is 0.01 and negative five, 0.01 and negative five. So again, just kind of the best thing to do is just match the values here to the way you have your measure number set up. And then from here, you can make adjustments as needed, and you'll have a reference point um, to work with. Now, the really easy thing to do with this is just to create, you know, make a selection. Let's say I'm going to select 9 through 16. Now, this is a blank file, but, you know, oftentimes there's music in the way of these measure numbers, and sometimes it's, it's uh, helpful to just move the measure numbers in one direction or another. So what we can do with these uh, top three uh, lines here is literally just change the value. So if we wanted everything to go down to 0.6 instead of 0.5, we can just change this. Now there is no multi-measure rest in this selection, but we can just do that anyway. And we click go, and you can see that all of those numbers got moved a little bit lower. So this is just an easy way to sort of uh, move a mass of numbers in one direction. Let me just reset this. Now I should mention something about the bottom of this window. There's a, a bunch of options for how to process this. So we have the process for both tabs on Go, process current tab. This actually has to do with this. So you can process the instrument headers, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, um, and or the measure numbers. Um, I recommend probably doing the current tab because uh, this is a very specialized thing. Um, it has a specific purpose. So most often just check current tab. Uh, you can process all the parts at once and the score. Um, you know, with measure numbers, oftentimes your uh, positions are going to be different between the score and the parts, so it might not be totally necessary to do this. Obviously, if you're only processing the score, just unselect this, and if you're showing the score, then it will process that. Uh, there is an option to process all open, open documents, but that actually will only work, I think, if you're viewing... I think this will only apply if the measure, I don't remember exactly how this is, maybe if it's the, the if the linked parts are using the score setting, there's a, there's a, uh, um, there's some way that this is only available, I think that might be what it is. Uh, so for certain files, this actually won't even uh, be available to you. Uh, let's see, if I go back to my, oops, violin part here. 
so anyway, so there's some uh, you know process uh, different things that we can do here. There's a few other uh, interesting options here. Horizontal offset for treble and other G clefs. Now, a lot of times, depending on your positioning, like the, the one that I have here, you can see that the, the measure numbers sort of get in the way of the, uh, the, the tail of the treble clef, which is always a problem. This is not a problem on a part that has a uh, bass clef, obviously. You can see that it's, it's not in the way. Um, so what this will do is actually allow you to include a, a special offset just for the instruments that use the treble clef. And actually, if you have an instrument that switches between clefs, like if a reed doubler switching between saxophone and bassoon or something, then it will actually only affect the measure numbers that are sitting next to a treble clef, which is really handy. Uh, so with this option set, we can just uh, set a value here. And what it will do is it will look for all those treble clef um, measure numbers and should move it. And you see what I did there? I, I act, forgot to put in the 0.5. You do have to be careful because it will always process all of these things, especially if you have um, this selected. So uh, I had forgotten to put in that 0.5. But again, if I do this one more time, you'll see that the only thing we'll move this time is the numbers next to the treble clef. Now, this that value is probably too large. You can see particularly with the single uh, measure number values, that's uh, not great. So an interesting way to do this is just kind of parse it out. So select measures 10 through... 99 for the two digit numbers and we can do a horizontal offset of point negative 0.05 instead of that so that just makes it a little bit more subtle and then choose let's say measures 100 through the end there we go and then do a larger value of negative 0.1 and you'll see that those treble clef numbers will get moved now, the one thing to be careful about is that this should really be the last thing you do in your operation because if you do this and then you start moving your measures around, like if I were to move measure 101 up a system, uh, what you'll see is that it won't affect this particular measure number, but it will affect this one uh, it's because this it's the actual number that gets moved a little bit. So again, you do just have to kind of uh, make sure that you're doing this kind of as the last process uh, in order for this to, uh, to work uh, efficiently. The next option here is for vertical offset for top staff on multi-staff systems. Now, um, this is a <laughs> for a very specific purpose. Uh, if you're doing something with uh, measure numbers in parts, let's like let's look at this keyboard part. This is a common thing in in uh, theater when you're measuring every number. Um, uh, you can see that the the measure numbers appear in a very unideal spot in a keyboard part because uh, th these measure number regions are attached to the top staff here. Um, so this part of the plugin is is somewhat helpful uh, in that it will adjust the measure numbers just for the uh, parts that have multi-system parts. Now again, uh, the reason for this is that you can, again, process all parts. So we could do this all together. We could check this, we could check this, and uh, set these values as we need to and do process all parts. I'm just showing you on a single part at a time just to kind of show you um, how this thing goes. Now with this vertical offset for top staff on multi-staff systems, I found that you do have to have mid-system mid numbers checked with these values um, set the way they are in your uh, measure number region for this to work ideally. But what this does, it will actually reset all of the numbers back to zero and then add 0.1. Um, so that it will go above, and if I click go, this should work. There we go, and you'll see that the um, see that the measure numbers have been up, put all above the uh, the, the system here. Uh, you will get these little extra measure numbers though, however, and this is just a, a function of the plugin, I think. And um, so the easiest thing to do is just right click them and then show hide based on region. This will um, uh, reset it to hide per the parameters of the expression in this case. So uh, again, that's just a little, little, little clutch that you have to do with this. But uh, otherwise, it's it's really great because it moves all these uh, bar number positions to the correct spot, which is really handy. Now let's look at this next thing: the center region, center ranges under multi-measure rests with the use expressions. Now, with without the use expressions, th there is sort of some limited use to this. Well, let me see if I can even, you know, uh, demonstrate this. So if I have a measure, um, multi-measure rest here, sorry, that was my keyboard maestro shortcut trick there. Um, 
the only way that this works, if you kind of drag this manually and let it unlink, it doesn't really, the plugin doesn't really work that well. Um, it really only works if you command drag it so that it's actually not unlinked. And then when you use the center ranges, it will reset that. So there's sort of limited uses for this. Um, also, if you choose to use expressions, what it's going to do is replace this range with an expression with the same um, uh, with the same uh, text font and the same position and everything. And you might be wondering why in the world would you even do that? Well, I'm about to show you. There is another little funky thing about Finale when you insert uh, A and B bars. And you know what? I'm going to use my little copyist helper here. Insert two measures before 11 to give me 10 A. Uh, and 10 B. And now if I were to uh, create a multi-measure rest here, you're going to get bars 9 through 14 because Finale does not know how to handle the measure ranges for multi-measure rests when it spans multiple uh, uh, measure number regions. And you get something horrible like this. And it says bars 9 through 14, which is not the case uh, because bar 14 is over here. So this doesn't make sense. This plugin fixes this. So center ranges, use expressions, go. And this is like magic. Now all of a sudden it says 9 through 10, comma 10 A through 10 B, comma 11 through 12. This is the appropriate way that this should be shown. And uh, this copyist helper fixes that in one fell swoop. And you can see that it takes that original measure range, it moves it up, it hides it, so this will never print. Um, so again, just a super, super helpful piece of this. And um, in the expression dialog box, by the way, it will create its own category. You should leave this alone. It will create its own set of um, expressions as you do this. So again, just leave this alone if you're going to use this. So that um, little center ranges under multi-measure rest with the expressions is <laughs> really, really handy. There's some other options I'll sort of gloss over a little bit. You can adjust for time, key, and repeat. And this just has to do when when you have a measure number uh, w next to a key change. I'll just show you this real quick. If we do a key change here, um, the measure number gets put off to the right after the key change. Uh, with this option, this will reset the, the number so that it's over here next to the bar line. Uh, we have the option to center under bar line. I'm not going to demonstrate all of this because you know this video is going to start getting long. It's already long, uh, but you can explore uh, some of those options. Um, uh, as you want to. All right, so that's sort of the numbers without enclosures. Again, there's some other options with, a, with enclosures. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely worth playing around with this because uh, it's, it's interesting. Now, the instrument header tab of the Copyist Helper plugin has some really uh, niche uses, but uh, I'm going to kind of uh, qu try and quickly go through them because uh, there is some helpful things here. Um, first of all, essentially what this is, this is a kind of um, a text inserts by brute force. Um, you're probably familiar already with the text inserts in Finale. Uh, you can do titles, subtitles. This calls up information from the score managers. There's, a, there's also the part score name insert. Um, and uh, this sort of works similarly, but in a completely different way. Uh, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to create a text block, and it has to be a page attached text block that has this exact name or this exact name. And uh, when you run this plugin, it will uh, replace that text block with a certain uh, piece of data, which I'll show you in a second. Now I should point out that this first one, the, um, the three dollar sign staff name uh, insert, is very much a piece of a bygone era in Finale. This was sort of uh, implemented into the plugin before linked parts. And uh, it's sort of left this part of the plugin a little bit obsolete. The, uh, the, score, in the score part name insert uh, kind of replaces this. So most of the time, you just ignore this unless you're dealing with an old file. The instrument name uh, replacement text here uh, does have some an, one very interesting application to it and I'm going to show you what that is. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text block that has this exact title and I'm going to use it to um, show the current instrument being played by my read doublers. Now one thing that I do have to point out is that uh, for this to work well you kind of have to select this option here to strip 
um, this, uh, this this type of text block from the part name. Uh, for some reason, it works a lot better if part name is selected as, a, as opposed to staff name. And the other thing I'll say is that generally you want to leave all four of these options checked. I'm not going to go into too much of the technical detail about why, but um, having these options checked and setting your, your text block up in a very certain uh, specific way will allow you to run this plugin over and over again um, which is uh, can be helpful as you're making updates. So I'm just going to show you, in my opinion, the best way to set this up and, uh, and how to use this. So I'm going to create a new text block on the second page here. And I'm going to call it parentheses, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, inst name. And it has to be typed exactly that way with a capital I and no capital N, etc. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this to page 2. Oops, page two through the end, just like that. I'm also going to hide this. And again, there's an option here to change hidden titles to show. This is, uh, this is the reason why I'm doing this. And uh, I did this, hold on a second, 50%. There we go. So now we can actually see that. And I'm also going to drag it off the page. And I'll explain why in a second. And then I'm going to go into my read parts. And just for these two read parts, I'm going to drag them back onto the page. And it will unlink, and that's all good. Read one, read two. So now I've set this up in a very specific way, and this is going to be helpful for the plugin. And I'm just going to go back to read one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all. You actually don't have to select all. If you have nothing selected, it will ask if you want to um, apply it to the whole document. That would be fine as well. And with this box set up just like this, again, this has to be on part name. Um, with these options checked, the, change the hidden titles that will allow this to do this. And what this is going to do is it's going to find these text blocks with this very specific name in it. And it's going to look for the measure that's closest to that text block, in this case, bar 33 here. And it's going to determine what instrument is playing at bar 33. And it's going to replace that text block with that instrument. All right, and you're going to see the value of this in a second. And I'm actually going to go ahead and process all parts. Not, you're not really going to want to do this on the score. And click Go. And it will give you this warning, warning about the staff name insert. Again, it's just telling you that uh, this part of it is a little obsolete and just fine. Click OK. And um, some weird things will appear to happen. You'll get a bunch of text blocks uh, up here. And if we move to the Read 2 block, you'll see a bunch of other text blocks. Most of these text blocks are hidden, so it's actually easier to see this if you go into your preferences and change your hidden object shading to 0%, so you're not actually seeing the hidden ones. And what will magically appear is the only ones that are showing are these instrument names. And uh, in this read doubling part, you can see what's going on is that uh, it's starting in clarinet. So when at bar 41, it's clarinet, but we switched to bassoon at bar 57, which means at the top of page four, it's still on bassoon. Uh, so it's playing bassoon. However, I switched to clarinet. So on the top of the next page, it says clarinet. Uh, and on and on and on. And did I have, nope, that was the last one I set up there. Uh, for the read one part, I believe, I never change any instruments, so this just starts with flute, and you'll see that it will say flute at the top um, all the way to the end. And um, all of the other parts, like my uh, horn and F part, because of this thing about stripping this particular uh, name with the parentheses um, if it matches the part name, uh, because that's the case in the horn and F, uh, you don't see anything here. Same thing with trumpet and B flat, trombone, etc. Um, so that's how uh, this is this is doing this. It's basically only looking at those parts that have the um, uh, the uh, the reads there. And actually, part of part of what I did here when I you saw me drag it off the score is to ensure that this will work because in some cases you may, uh, for example, I think I have um, my where is it my keyboard one. You know, is called keyboard one. It's not called uh, piano, so it might try and put in a piano marking here. So um, that's why I decided to drag those off. And uh, so yeah, so there you go. You can see that um, that uh, is a useful uh, piece of uh, thing to do.
The last piece of this is this little bookmark uh, replacement text here. And uh, for this, I'm going to go to a different file. This is kind of handy when you have uh, multiple movement pieces in a single finale file. You can see this piece has a um, Kyrie. And then if I scroll down here, there's a Gloria. This is the <laughs> copyist helper mass. Um, and one of the limitations of Finale's sort of insert system is that, you know, I have this Kyrie listed as a subtitle insert. So I can use that up here in my uh, text block here to get that, the uh, subtitle in here as well. But obviously that's a problem because that will only work for one movement. Even though I'm in the Gloria now, it's still saying Kyrie. Um, so how would I get, you know, these page blocks to now say, or these text blocks on these pages to say Gloria, and then in the third movement to say um, uh, Credo, et cetera. So that's sort of a, a tricky thing. You can, I guess you can kind of set up separate text blocks if you want, but there's another way to do it with these books mark, bookmarks, which I'm going to show you. So the thing I'm going to do here, first of all, is I'm going to change this text block. I'm going to get rid of that insert. So instead of saying, um, uh, instead of the subtitle insert, I'm going to uh, type in dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, bookmark. Okay. Now, again, with this particular um, plugin, it's useful to make sure that these are hidden and allow it to um, reshow them. And again, I had my uh, hidden shading. To s Let's just put that back to 50 so we can see that it's still there. There we go. Um, and the other thing we want to do is make sure that we're not processing, processing just the parts on this particular file. Now, the key to this is that it's going to replace this bookmark, but what's it going to replace it with? Well, it's going to replace it with a bookmark. And Finale in the View menu has these things called bookmarks. Now, there won't be any in your file to begin with, but they are easy enough to add. Just do the Add Bookmark, and you get this little um, dialog box, and you can type in anything you want here. And I'm going to call this one Kyrie. And the important part of this is that these have to be scroll view bookmarks. They will, they can't be page view, so they have to be scroll view bookmarks attached to a certain measure. The uh, page view bookmarks will attach to a page. These actually have to be attached to a measure. So uh, in this case, I know that Kyrie starts with measure one, and I'm going to name this Kyrie uh, one Kyrie, attach it to measure one, make sure it's a scroll view bookmark. And now when you go into this bookmarks menu, you'll see that I have my Kyrie. So I'm just going to go really quickly and add these because I happen to know what uh, bar numbers there are here. So bear with me. I may um, uh, fast forward this a little bit. All right, and so I've added the last one. They're all scroll view bookmarks. I hope I did that right on use day. And then you can see now my bookmarks list has five of them. Um, and so these are the pieces of information that the plugin is going to use to replace that uh, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign bookmark uh, text block. All right, so I believe I've set it up correctly. I'm just going to select all here. Again, make sure you're uh, make sure you're I'm not processing the parts in this case. This is just a score. Make sure that the change hidden titles to show. Again, this just allows you and the replace, uh, make copies rather than replace. This just allows you later to run this plugin again if you have to. So you press go. And hopefully I didn't screw it up. And you can kind of see, again, it makes a mess because it's putting them all over top of each other. But let's see if I did this right. And we go in here, choose hidden object shading. What you should get is, there it is, copies helper mass uh, one Kyrie, one Kyrie, right? And this should say one Kyrie all the way through to movement two, which is where, there it is. And then it says to Gloria. And then we go on to Gloria. It'll keep saying Gloria until we get to the third movement. Now, in this case, the third movement I put in the middle. So this one is still um, attached to the previous bookmark because 169 has not getting, gotten to the new bookmark for Credo. But then on the next page, it will say Credo. And that's really the, the right way to do that. And then we go on. Let's see where four is. There it is, Sanctus and Benedictus. And then the fifth movement. Again, Sanctus and Benedictus on the top, but on the next page it will say uh, the fifth movement. So that's really an, an interesting uh, thing to do. Now, this it may seem like this may be a, a little bit too much work, particularly for a single um, layout. You know, in a piano vocal score like this, you may be right. It's it's also possible to do this with uh, separate book uh, or separate text blocks that 
you know, finish on page whatever this is, 51, and then create a new one that starts on 52 and goes to the, to the end or whatever. Um, you may be correct, but this is also possible to do with linked parts. Now, again, I did this just on the score, but you can do this on all parts, and it will correctly create the correct um, uh, subtitle uh, text block in the top here for every single part. So that's actually kind of uh, the most useful piece of that. So yeah, so that's what's going on. So that's the uh, the dollar sign dollar sign bookmark um, brute force text insert, as I like to call them. All right, so yeah, that's a lot. That's the copyist helper. There's the instrument headers. There's the measure numbers. And again, you know, for my money, the huge uh, deal for me is the insert measure and the insert system par portion of this new version of copyist helper. Totally worth it in my opinion. It just saves so much time in so many different ways. Um, I can't recommend it enough. So uh, once again, the, the link for the download for this will be uh, in the description below the video. So I encourage you to check that out. And um, thanks for watching. I'm hoping to do some more of these uh, spotlight on plugins uh, tutorial videos um, because there is a ton of plugins and, um, you know, I'll just cover them one by one, I guess, until, you know, the end of time. <laughs> All right. So once again, thanks for watching. My name is Jason. This has been Conquering Finale, a spotlight on plugins. This is the Patterson's copyist helper plugin. Totally worth it. All right. So thanks for watching, and I will see you soon on the next video.